We're here basically in uh, European Commission land and uh, the basic narrative is are we basically going to take care of our own security in the European Union or are we going to keep farming it out to NATO? But uh, I'm here with uh, an Irish anti-war group uh, and we have a ever so slightly different angle on it. Uh, we think uh, from Ireland's point of view neither of those are the answer. Uh, we think we're better off staying the way we are, staying neutral and basically staying out of the mess that these people are causing. And we come from a country or from an island where we have proof that sitting down and talking to each other and dialogue are the way to solving uh, conflicts. And that more militarization and more weaponization and the more funding of guns and bombs, etc., doesn't lead to peace. If Trump left in the morning, NATO would still exist and still be uh, a threat uh, to us. PESCO, uh, permanent uh, European structured cooperation in the military field. Now, this really is laying the basis uh, for an EU army. And it is not an alternative to NATO. It is integrally linked to NATO and it recognises NATO as having the supreme control, which it does because NATO controls the nuclear bomb. Irish neutrality has, has been government policy since 1939 when World War II began, but it's been a part of, of the Irish Republican tradition going back to Wolf Tone. It's not something new. It's something that's deeply rooted, I think, uh, in the struggle for independence. We know what the struggle for independence is. We, want our, we wanted our independence. We wanted to live in peace in the world. Uh, and that commitment to the peaceful resolution of disputes around the world is, is enshrined in the Constitution. So although the government has been eroding neutrality, and pushing it right up to the limit with decisions such as this to to join PESCO, at some point they're going to run into the, with, they're going to run into problems in the constitution and in that constitutional commitment uh, to the peaceful resolution of, of international disputes. Um, where people put across the argument there that France and, uh, Ge and Germany and Britain there were all we know more wars in Europe. But actually we have colonial powers coming together to use the European Union to, uh, to colonise and to um, take more resources out of Africa and the, the, uh, the Middle East. Um, all these intervention wars that we had, like, you know, they looked at the disaster that you have done in Libya, in Syria, in Afghanistan, like, you know, in, in the Balkans there, that, what, did they destroy people's lives, they destroyed uh, thousands and thousands of people's lives there and create my mass migration there. Now we want to become a fortress to Europe. Instead of helping these pe poor people who are escaping all famine and war and all that there, that we cause, now we just don't want to allow these people to come into uh, uh, our, uh, our countries. Like, it's just madness craziness. I'm here because I think it's very important for people who are for peace to speak out against NATO, to speak out against the militarization of Europe, to speak out against the pressure to turn a neutral nation into one which is involved in military misadventures. It also seems to me that uh, from going to a meeting this morning that there's some very old dinosaur thinking going on regarding nuclear weapons. Instead of recognizing that disarmament is the only way to peace, they want to create and maintain new nuclear weapons. They're working actually on ones which could technically be used in the battlefield in a number of countries. Uh, it, it's important to bring on the younger people on board into the anti-war movement and the peace movement. So, But again, as people get more financially uh, insecure, thinking, my God, I need to get kids shoes for school next week but if I get that can I actually get the books they need at school as well people's heads are tossing up how they're going to get through the day financially uh, nowadays more so than at any other time in my 70 years on the surf and um, I just think while that's happening it is so much harder for them then to go into a campaign and wholeheartedly get into particularly the organizing of a rally and that sort of thing, they may come along, but uh, it is so hard to, to, to keep an organization going. We had a couple of meetings and a couple of MEPs came and spoke at those meetings against PESCO and we now, this is a new, very new, we've created um, a group of parliamentarians in the parliament in the Dáil and they have 42 who actually we met with us last week where, you know, they are discussing what we can do against PESCO and how to 
convince the government that the decision they took was wrong on PESCO. Mm -hmm. Neutral states under the Hague Convention cannot give free passage to troops on their way to a war. That's, that's, that's clearly set out in the Hague Convention. And uh, the, Ed Horgan from Shannon Watch, who took the case, they didn't win the case, but they would have won it. There's a fair chance they would have won it, according to the court, if the Hague Convention had been part of Irish law. Neutrality is government policy, but it hasn't been enshrined in law. And Pana very much would like to see the Hague Convention or the relevant parts thereof enshrined in Irish law. And had it been so enshrined, there's a fair chance the case would have been won. We sense perhaps the tide is turning. Uh, there, there is, as I said earlier, strong public support for neutrality. That has never waned. And we think possibly the decision to join PESCO could be a bridge too far for those who are trying to destroy Irish neutrality. It could be a turning point. We're not sure. We'll certainly do our best to ensure that it is a turning point and we'll continue to work to preserve Irish neutrality and, re and re restore it to what it should be. It's a killer, pardon the pun, but I'm going to have to use Tony Blair's language. We have a third way, and our third way is not NATO, not EU militarisation, but Ireland stay neutral, and if needs be, if it ever comes to it, defend ourselves like we did in the past. We took on the British Empire and we beat them. If needs be, hopefully it'll never happen. We'll do it again. <laughs>